President Joe Biden has for the first time authorized the use of U.S.-supplied long-range missiles by Ukraine to strike inside Russia, according to one U.S. official and three people familiar with the matter. The decision is a major U.S. policy shift and comes as Biden is about to leave office and incoming President-elect Donald Trump has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and has expressed skepticism over continued support by the United States. The weapons are likely to be used in response to North Korea's decision to send thousands of troops to Russia in support of Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, according to one of the people. The official and the people familiar with the matter were not authorized to discuss the decision publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and many of his Western supporters have been pressing Biden for months to allow Ukraine to strike military targets inside Russia with Western-supplied missiles, saying the U.S. ban had made it impossible for Ukraine to try to stop Russian attacks on its cities and electrical grids. Some supporters have argued that this and other U.S. constraints could cost Ukraine the war. The debate has become a source of disagreement among Ukraine's NATO allies. Biden had remained opposed, determined to hold the line against any escalation that he felt could draw the U.S. and other NATO members into direct conflict with Russia. Russians are intensifying combat operations in an attempt to break through the front lines as the time remaining until the inauguration of the U.S. president-elect Donald Trump is limited, says Ukrainian military expert Mikhailo Samus, director of the new Geopolitics Research Network, according to Espresso TV. The inauguration of the new U.S. president is scheduled for the 20th of January, 2025. Donald Trump has repeatedly stated that he will ensure the war between Russia and Ukraine is quickly brought to an end. Samus has explained that the current situation at the front has not changed significantly over the past two months. Russian forces remain focused on the Pokrovsk and Kurokov directions in Donetsk Oblast. The Russians' time is limited. I mean the window of opportunity they theoretically have before Trump's inauguration. Samus said. The expert noted that signals from the US are not as negative for Ukraine as initially feared. The candidates being considered by Trump for his administration are, among other things, anti-Russian and advocate a peace through strength approach, forcing Putin to end the war through power. We'll see the details soon, Samus claimed. He emphasized that this development is not what Russian ruler Vladimir Putin had hoped for when he tried to occupy Donbass over the past year. Putin essentially expected to achieve decisive success in Donbass, occupying nearly the entire region. From this strong position, he planned to negotiate with the new US president. Currently, the situation is not looking so favorable for Putin. He is sending his troops into a meat grinder, incurring massive losses. The Russians are throwing everything they have, all resources, into a desperate attempt to break through the front in the shortest time possible, Samus highlighted. He added that the Kurokov direction is particularly challenging for Ukraine's defense forces right now. According to the expert, Putin aims to reach the administrative borders of Donetsk Oblast to demonstrate to the world and the new U.S. administration that supporting Ukraine is pointless and that Russia is winning. He concluded that this strategy of Russia has remained unchanged for a long time. China's leader Xi Jinping met for the last time with U.S. President Joe Biden but was already looking ahead to President-elect Donald Trump and his America First policies, saying Beijing is ready to work with a new administration. The two leaders gathered Saturday on the sidelines of the annual Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Biden was expected to urge Xi to dissuade North Korea from further deepening its support for Russia's war on Ukraine. Without mentioning Trump's name, she appeared to signal his concern that the incoming president's protectionist rhetoric on the campaign trail could send the U.S.-China relationship into another valley. China is ready to work with a new U.S. administration to maintain communication, expand cooperation and manage differences so as to strive for a steady transition of the China-U.S. relationship for the benefit of the two peoples, she said through an interpreter. In a major flourishing SciTech revolution, neither decoupling nor supply chain disruption is a solution, she said. Only mutual, beneficial cooperation can lead to common development. 
Small yard, high fence is not what a major country should pursue. There's much uncertainty about what lies ahead in the US-China relationship under Trump, who campaigned promising to levy 60% tariffs on Chinese imports. Biden, who is winding down more than 50 years of public service, talked in broader brushstrokes about where the relationship between the two countries has gone. For a decade, you and I have spent many hours together, both here and in China and in between. And, uh, you know, we, I think we spent uh, a long time <laughs> dealing with these issues. Can you... Protect your earpiece, we have simultaneous interpreting. I learned to speak Chinese. <laughs> Wish I did. Okay, let me begin first. It's a great pleasure to see you again, President Biden. We haven't always agreed, but our conversations have always been candid and always been frank. We have never kidded one another. We've been level with one another. I think that's vital. These conversations prevent miscalculations, and they ensure the competition between our two countries will not veer into conflict. Be competition, not conflict. That's our responsibility to our people, and as you indicated, to the people around the world. We are the most important alliance or most important relationship in the entire world. And how we get along together is going to impact the rest of the world. A drone attack was launched on the city of Izhevsk in Russia's Udmursha Republic on the morning of November 17, local telegram channels reported. Ukrainian kamikaze drones targeted the Kupol factory in the city. The plant produces TOR anti-aircraft missile complexes, radar stations, and Garpia drones. One of the drones reportedly fell into the territory of the enterprise, as a result of which the windows of one of the workshops were broken. The footage circulated on telegram channels shows an explosion after the drone strike. One person was injured during the incident. The workers of the factory were evacuated. It should be noted that Izhevsk, the capital of the Udmurt Republic, is located 1,200 kilometers from the border with Ukraine.